options. Money is portable power. Without money, you can feed people. Without money, you can change things. Without money, you can start a company. Without money, you can do things for your family. Without money, you can go where the fuck you want, when you want, where you want, how you want. Great tool. But that's all it is, is a tool. Because if you think it's more than a tool and you think it's a source of your happiness, you're going to miss all the shit along the way. Because everyone in this room, we're all doing one thing in common. No matter how aligned our lives are or different than they are, we're all traveling through time together. And that traveling time is like that river out there. It does not stop. And sometimes feels slower and faster than others, but that traveling through time. And everyone here is going through the process of aging. Everyone here is going through the process of shifting life. The question is, how much of life are you living along the way? Are you truly rich or do you just have some money? Or do you not have money and you don't have wealth? I know people have money who are very poor. I know people have lots of money that are very rich. The difference is how they are in their relationships, how they are in their sense of spirit, how they are in capturing the moments. So you have to decide right now to be rich, not when you get to a certain number. You got to decide right now, I'm a wealthy mother or whatever appropriate language would be for you. But when you operate from you're already beyond, you're not trying to get beyond the scarcity. If you're always operating in scarcity, I got to try to get somewhere. That's bullshit. I'm here and there's the mountain I'm taking next. That's very different than I'm going to try to get to that place when I can finally be enough, certain enough, happy enough, free enough, excited enough. And the truth is when most of the things you get to where they are, it's nothing like you thought it was going to be. Who's achieved some huge goal, you got it, you're excited, and then for how long? Who can think of a goal that you just pushed, busted for, you got it, and you really were excited about it, how long did that feeling last for that situation? How long? A minute? Seconds? A month? Who can remember something that you really were excited about, and within six months to a year max, you were taking it for granted? Let me see your hands. <laughs> That's the way the human brain works. That's the way the mind works. The heart doesn't work that way. The heart, when it's there, it doesn't forget. It's one thing that's going to make you wealthy. It's turning your expectation into appreciation. That's the day you become wealthy. The day you trade expectation for appreciation is the day you become wealthy. Because as long as you're expecting things, you're going to be disappointed. You're expecting people to be a certain way. They're not going to be. If the only time you're happy is when they all act and behave a certain way, you're not going to be happy very much. Or if you're happy, it'll be for a short period of time. You expect your spouse to be a certain way. You expect your kids to be a certain way. You expect your coworkers to be a certain way. You expect yourself to be a certain way. How about appreciation? That's the game. Because if you can appreciate the littlest things, you got gifts that nobody else has. So the first place to be wealthy is psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. And that place has to get regular deposits. And that means, just like some of you meditate, you need a daily discipline of magic moments. And you got to learn to capture the little ones. And that muscle's got to be built. So what's your daily practice? You can call it whatever you want. We'll call it here magic moments. Every day I want you to capture at least two to three magic moments minimum. It could have been a conversation with a friend. It could have been a moment when an insight happened. It could have been a moment on the mountain. It could have been a little insight or distinction that you got that changed it. But you don't just capture it and write it down. You want to feel it and realize its value. You want to feel it like it's grace. Like it's a gift that's been given to you. And what you're doing is appreciating that gift. But like when people say money doesn't matter, um, they don't know where to shop. <laughs> and what I mean is <laughs> they don't know what to shop for and who to shop for. Mm -hmm. Because all the research shows something interesting. If you make twice as much money, you're making $25,000 a year and you make 50. People think it'll double their level of enjoyment of life or happiness. And on average, it improves 9%. It's just mind boggling. There's the initial excitement and it's 9% better statistically. Uh, lots of studies have shown once you make $75,000 a year, making more money you like, but it doesn't truly change your happiness in a sustainable way. Once you make basically a middle-class salary, people make more might argue about that with them, but that's what, that's what the studies show. But what the studies now show is how you spend money. $5 a day spent right will bring you more joy than $10,000 spent poorly. And what does that mean? I can give you dozens of them, I'll give you three. Number one, if you spend money on things, you limit your level of happiness. If you spend the money on experiences, 
it creates a generative effect in your body emotionally. And they can measure the level of fulfillment and happiness you have just by the purchases you make. And they've done it scientifically all the way down to how it changes your biochemistry down to the, the changes in your saliva and the hormones. That's where the research comes. It's not somebody airy-fairy saying, well, if you have experience, it will be better. Second one, when you spend money on things that take, give you time and take away drudgery, if you can get somebody else that you pay and they are employed and they now scrub the floor or they clean the toilet and they have an income and they're happy and you're freed up to do something you're more passionate about in business or life, the level of happiness grows geometric. But the one that creates the greatest happiness is the one that sounds trite, but it's biochemically accurate. And that is investing in others, which simply means giving your money away. Really? And it's mind boggling. And they show you time out, they show you with little numbers, like you know, buying a cup of coffee for a stranger and what it does and how long the happiness does versus you buy the coffee for yourself versus you buy it for a friend. And I've got the studies and it's fascinating. But what I can tell you from my own life experience, like um, the people that I know that are the happiest on earth are not the people with the most money. I know I got a lot of clients that you will know that are billionaire clients and a lot of them come to me because they want me to do something with their business. But invariably, I'll see there's something going on with them too that makes them unhappy. It doesn't matter how much money they have. There's people with a billion dollars and they still live in scarcity. It doesn't matter how much money they have, right? By the way, I asked that question of everyone I interviewed. I said, does financial pressure ever go away? 85% said no. And the you average- can imagine how much it would increase proportionally. Well, for, it, for some, for a few it didn't, but for most of them it did. They felt more responsibility. They had more I gotta manage, more they gotta do. So if you think financial pressure is gonna go away just by having money, they just learn to handle it differently. Mm -hmm. Have a totally different experience. But I'm juiced about people seeing what, how they can use the money that makes them, makes joy happen like I love to do things where it's a total surprise my I remember when I had very little money I was just getting started I grew up in a very tough environment and my mom always loved the ocean and we lived in the San Gabriel Valley of LA where they had smog alerts and you couldn't go outside for a couple of days it was horrible and I called my mom up and I said this early in my career and I said come meet me in Huntington Beach um, there's a condo I'm considering getting on the beach. I'm considering living on the beach, mom, but I want, I want your feedback, what you think. So she drives down to meet me. And I'll never forget, I just look so much, she goes, oh my God, smell the air, it's so fresh, and this is the dream to live on the beach, and my son's gonna live on the beach. And I show her the condo, and she's like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I said, you sure, do you really think it'll be worth it? She goes, I don't care what it costs. She said, if you can get in, you get this. And I said, you feel that strong? And she said, yeah, and then I said, it's yours. And I handed the keys. <laughs> what a and day. it was like, my mom's passed away you know, a long time ago, but it was one of those days that to this day, I can remember the feeling and experience of like, holy shit, um, you don't get that by buying something for yourself. Yeah. You don't get that by you know, earning a bunch of money. It's beautiful to have those choices. Um, we were staving up for an RV and we were invited to Las Vegas. We had this trip and we came around the corner and there's this ultra unbelievable double-sided, you know, and I said, wow, look at that. He said, oh my God, that's the most incredible. We can never have anything like that. And I said, well, let's, let's look inside. The door's open. He said, oh, we can't go in there. I said, well, let's just stick our head in, you know? <laughs> Took him in, right? And they said, oh, we can't. I said, come on. I sat down there. Like, get out of there. Get out of there. It's yours. You know, those are the days that, um, that's what mastering money's about. Yeah. You either master it or it masters you, baby. Yeah. And if you master it, you can learn, grow, and you can give. And um, money isn't everything because you have a lot of money and still be a selfish bastard. I mean, money just makes you more of what you are. If you're really selfish, you got more to be selfish with. If you're really giving, you can have more to can give with. And um, so I feel privileged at this stage in my life to have found a way to do what I love, which is to light people up and bring them breakthroughs and bring them answers in their body, their emotions, their relationships, all these areas, but also in their financial area as well. And uh, when you're able to do it in all those areas, life's pretty cool. If you just do it in the money area, it's not enough. I mean, richest man in the graveyard is not gonna do any good. Um, and so, this book is really about how to have that real wealth. And I just finished to tell you that I end the book sharing a story that I'll share with you because um, you know me well enough to know what, what this is like. And I know you can relate in some ways. I, um, I know your background and your hot suit going out there with your credit card machines down in, was it Macon, Georgia? Macon, Georgia. Macon, man. Georgia, baby. It's still I, hot down there. Uh, it is still hot yeah. down there, and, and, and you're not. I think I'm still <laughs> unwelcome to go try to sell credit card machines down. They'd still rather be not showing up. I probably, that's a good thing. Yeah. But we have a similar background. We started with nothing, you know, and I can remember that I know the day I became wealthy because I was thinking towards the end of the book, what was the day that I became a wealthy man? And uh, I was broke. I was living in Venice, not Venice, Italy, Venice, LA, in this 400 square foot bachelor apartment. I was feeling sorry for myself. 
Um, I was mad at the world. I was mad at a friend of mine that I loaned, you know, thousand bucks to, and he didn't pay me back, and he wouldn't return my phone calls because I was broke. I mean, I was down to, I don't know, 23, 24 bucks, something like that, some change. No prospects. I'm like, how am I going to eat? How am I going to survive? I'm going to pay my rent. I was already behind my rent by 30 days. And um, I had, well, when I was 17, I, my mom kicked my dad out. He went back east and kicked me out. And I survived by scratching up enough money each day and then going to the smorgasbord and like loading up for the winter, mm -hmm. you know, just eating all I could to make it last a day or two. And I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And I was, I walked, I didn't want to take my car and the gas will pay for parking and have that kind of money. And I walked it was three or four miles from Venice to this place in Marina del Rey. It's still there. And uh, it's called El Torito. It's this little Mexican restaurant that's on the water where all the, you know, the amazing yachts are. And I thought, I'm going to go there and I'm going to absorb this abundance environment because I'm so scarce. And I'm going to eat all I can possibly eat <laughs> you know, for five ninety five with this tacos and salad. Incredibly and healthy and energizing. <laughs> of course, totally yeah, energizing. Yeah. Like something I can go have a good sleep afterwards and forget <laughs> yeah. all this, right? And uh, I went in, I loaded up for winter, and I ate all the stuff, and I'm looking out there, and it was a beautiful day, and it was gorgeous. And so I got up to go pay, and as I got to go pay, in the front door walks this little boy, probably eight years old, and seven, eight years old, and uh, he he was dressed in a suit, and he's just like, you know, kind of demure like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, if anything, I'm certainly demure, as you well know. As I well know, but yeah. sincerely, he was just really... I don't know, it was just, there was something about this kid. He had this air about him, this, and, he was, and he opened the door for his mother, and he opened the, pulled the chair out for her. And I don't know, something about it just struck me emotionally very deeply. And I was just touched, thinking, this little boy has got so much heart and class. And uh, so I walked up to him. I paid my bill and I walked up to him, and I, and I said hi, and I introduced myself, and I was nobody. Was, you know, who the hell is Tony Robbins? No, Tony Robbins. And he says, Who is uh, this gigantic? Yeah, that's what he's really man. thinking is my there. <laughs> and I said, I just want to tell you, I watched you for the last few minutes. I said, I watched you open the door for you later. I saw you pull out the chair. I saw the way you looking in her eyes and giving her full attention. I said, you are a class act. And he looked at me and I said, and taking her lunch, that's awesome. He goes, well, she's my mom. <laughs> you know? And I said, that's even more cool. And he said, well, I, I'm not taking a lunch because I don't have a job yet. You know, I'm eight. You know? And I said, and I looked at him. I said, yes, you are. And I didn't have any plan. I just reached in my pocket, took all the money I had in the world. It was like 19 bucks and some change, whatever was left after that. And I just sat down in front of him in front of the table. And, and he looked up at me. His eyes got big as garbage can covers. He goes, what's that? And he smiled. And I said, that's yours. He goes, I can't take that. And I said, yes, you can. He said, how come? I said, because I'm bigger than you are. <laughs> and then I didn't say another every word. time. I didn't say another word. I just turned. I didn't even look at his mom. I wasn't doing it for attention. And I walked out that door. And um, I didn't walk out that door. I flew out of that door, man. I just, I had no car. I'm walking home, you know. I just felt like so alive. I felt so free. And I should have been scared shitless. You know, I, got, I got no money. I, got, I don't know where I'm going to feed myself. I you give away the last bit. There wasn't an ounce of fear in me. It was like in that moment, scarcity died. It just died. It was out of my life. And I went home that night, and I had no clue what I was going to do. But I was, I was like excited and inspired, and and I started writing out this plan. And, and I thought, well, people fast all the time. I can fast for four or five days. <laughs> yeah, that's probably Especially good for that me. Meal. <laughs> you know, I can eat after that meal. And I got this little plan in my head. And I'm going to work it out. And I woke up the next morning, and I had no fear in me. And going, going to go work on my plan. And the old snail mail arrived, and there I get this old envelope in the old days. Right, tear the thing open, and it's a check from the guy who wouldn't even return my phone call for more than a thousand dollars he threw some interest in and you know twelve hundred dollars in those days would cover my butt for two weeks to a month right you know it's like and i started to cry and um i just i'll never forget i think to myself what does this mean and i decided that that meant that i was being rewarded for doing what's right uh, by not operating out of scarcity and fear by just it was spontaneous it was authentic it was just it felt right and i did what felt right and i was rewarded and i i believed in my mind i still believe to this day it may not be true but that was that was grace and um so that from that day forward it was just like just do more give more share more create more and what you need will be there it's like air you don't stop to think about when you take a breath whether it'll be there or not it's always going to be there yeah you just got to do your part so uh, I'm emotional about it, except even though it's been 
decades and decades since that day. Well, but look what the guiding principle has created. And I, that's why I say I look at my life today and the millions of people I've had a chance to serve and be a part of and who my friends are and the life I get to, to live my life with today. It's just um, the rewards, the karma, if you would, corny as it may sound. And so, you know, for me today, just recently, you know, I was thinking about it, it's probably why I'm so emotional. I was thinking about where this journey began for me, my desire to serve. You know, every day before I get on stage, I have one, I do this thing to whip myself at a peak state, and then my last words are, use me, Lord. You know, it's, I just, I, that's my prayer. And uh, every day, my goal is to be a blessing in people's lives. And, um, and I've written a book that when I was done, I'm probably feeling that too. It's a four-year journey. It's the best of what I found on the face of the earth. And I know anybody picks it up who's sincere and just even applies a small portion of it, their life will be altered and it will be altered for the better and that karma continues. And I also know uh, part of this is, you know, up front, I'm not waiting for a book to sell. I didn't do some feeding promotion. I wrote a check for 55 million people to be fed, which since I couldn't even feed myself back then feels pretty unbelievable. And I know I've done my part. And I also know Grace has been a part of that. And uh, for that, I'm grateful. Well, we're all grateful for you. You know, speaking of that, yes, a lot of people are going to see this. Yes. And if you remember the one that we did last time, yes, I got letters from it. You got letters from it. And there would be that one person. They say, you know, I watched the video when I was in this condition. And then you said that one thing. Yeah. And then I applied it. Yeah. And things turned around for me. And I'm wondering if you could think about who that person is and tell them that one thing right now, what would it be? It's a great question. So much to pull from. But at my core, uh, my mom wanted me to be a truck driver because <laughs> that would mean I'd make $24,000 a year if I went to truck masters. And that would be twice what my father made. And she thought that would happen. But something inside of me said, I don't want to drive a truck. There's something else that matters more to me. And I decided I was not going to go for money instead of passion. And, uh, the rewards have been pretty amazingly better than being a truck driver. It's not bad being a truck driver. It's just not what I was after. And I, I look back, and one of the things that helped me was my original teacher, Jim Rohn, who was a personal development speaker I went to hear when I was 17. He said something the first time I heard him, and he said, you know, it's really simple. If you want life to change, you've got to change. If you want life to be better, you've got to get better. It's the only way it happens. And luck will show up for people and it'll leave them. But if you're constantly improving who you are and what you give, game over. And he also told me something about economics that I never forgot. He said, you know, economics is really simple. The world really is simple. If you will find a way to add more value to other people's lives than anybody else does, then you'll never have to worry about that area of your life. And if you look at it, most of us don't realize you can add a lot of value and be a school teacher and add enormous value. And unfortunately, in our society, you won't get paid well. But as I show in the book, if you add value to more people, instead of 30 children, there's a school teacher in there that makes $2 million a year. And he does it with the web and he does it by coaching. He's from Japan and it's quite extraordinary. So if you do want to earn more by adding value, there's a way. You can also add value and make no money. You can also add value and give it away and you still earn more. It's like the joy that we get from that giving that we talked about. Of all things we talked about, the things that brought me to tears is thinking about how far it's come and all that's come in the life from that day when I did what's right and the other time I've been in tears is thinking about, you know, what I did for my mom and things of that nature. Those ultimate rewards come from giving. So if you work at McDonald's, there's nothing wrong with it. But the reason you make seven twenty five an hour is lots of people can do that. Mm -hmm. If you're David Tepper last year, he made three point five billion dollars. I'm not saying that should be aspirational for you, but it's because he found a way to do something nobody else did last year, which is get a 42 percent return. You find a way to add more value. If you can figure out what you're most passionate about, find a way to do it in a way that adds more value to more people. Then economics will never be a question for you. But more important, you'll be wealthy because you'll know that you're a giver, not a taker in this world. And I think uh, putting ourselves in that position is maybe the greatest gift we can give ourselves and everybody else. Well, I think you've certainly given a lot with this book. <laughs> I mean, it's a hell of a thing. <laughs> yeah, I've, it's curls. A, four years. <laughs> yeah, it's four years. I've just, life. and I mean, I've kind of been along for the journey. What's going on? I'm writing this book. I'm on page seven. It has taken me forever to get to page seven. <laughs> you know, then a year later, and it's about a hundred pages in, three thousand hours. So, yeah. is guys read it? You know, I don't. I'm pretty sure to, it's safe to say that their purchase 
is not going to really make a significant difference in your life. So no, I'm not is, getting any money from it at all. Yeah, not a penny. Yeah, and, we're and, not in the book selling business. Not, not even moment, slightly. But, no, no. In terms of, but their investment will not only change themselves. But I'm feeding 50, if you sell a million copies, which is the average what I've done in the past, then there'll be 50 people fed just by you getting this book. So not only do you benefit, but other people benefit as well, which is a pretty cool thing. Can't go wrong. Empower yourself. Empower other people. Do good things. You will be rewarded. Thanks for doing the interview, man. It's been a pleasure. It's been great always. to see you and be with you again. Yeah.